So welcome back to the channel. We're on the uh, Discovery again today. It's a bit of a controversial point whether you just do an oil change on the gearbox or whether you do a mega flush. So I have inquired about a mega flush and the cost of that, which the idea of mega flush is you pump new gearbox oil in with the car running, it uh, with it naturally pumping, it replaces old oil for new oil, so you change a good 95% of the oil during that change. Rather than doing just a normal oil change on the driveway, lift, ramp, whatever, um, where it's general consensus is that only change is half-ish, just over the oil in the gearbox, the coolers, the lines, and everything else. So, a mega flush is towards 500 pounds by the time you've got the dreaded VAT in the UK and everything like that. And the they don't change the filter. So my car has now done 166,000 miles and I haven't got an, I didn't get any history with it when I got it. I know it's obviously a bit of a bit of a no-no when looking at a car, but I used to buy and sell cars, dad had a garage, stuff like that. This all seemed to check out okay, so I wasn't too fussed. So I don't know whether this has ever been changed. Um, it seems to just occasionally just delay a little bit in the gear change. I'm not, it's not 100% smooth um, or it's not 100% how I think it should be. I've got the three series as well, which basically I think got the same gearbox in it, but um, eight speed ZF. So 500 pounds to anyone is quite a lot of money. Um, I have bought a service kit from a company in Belgium, Netherlands, wherever it was. So it's a genuine ZF filter and eight liters of genuine ZF oil. And it was a little under 200 pounds. So my idea thinking is if I only change 50% of the oil and they say you usually get about four, four and a half liters. My thinking right or wrong um, is for under 200 pounds, I can change the filter, which wouldn't have got done otherwise. And for argument's sake, I'll change half the oil. So 50% of it will be new, 50% will be old. I'm going to run it for a couple of weeks and then just drain the oil and change it again. So in that case, the 50% 50, 50 or it will then have 50% new oil, 50% old oil. If I dump half of it again and change it, it will then be three quarters new oil and save myself quite a few hundred pounds and it's got a new filter on it which it wouldn't have had otherwise so um i have got a copy here of robbie's guide to changing the oil on a zf eight speed gearbox and this can be found on uh well, i've actually got it on discovery three forum um but it is for the uh zf8 in the disco like mine so um this is also the guide that um, LR Time used when they uh, changed their oil. And uh, for those of you that don't know LR Time or watched any of their videos, they're very particular on where what they do and that sort of stuff. So I'd go as far as trusting them that uh, yeah, this is this is the way to do it. So uh, we're going to get the car up on uh, just some wheel ramps because I'm going to do this on driveway, and um, we'll have a look about uh, changing the oil. Now under the car, the first thing we can do is remove the filler bung because you don't end up draining all your oil and not be able to fill that up. So it should just be eight mil hex. So now that is cracked off. You can see how much oil almost drops. It's going to be at a higher level. So 
don't have to let, worry about leaving that to run so it's completely dry as we're gonna undo the drain point anyway. So I just wanted to make sure really that that comes undone. So let's just screw him back up. Just doing finger tight now because gonna have to take him out to fill it up anyway in a little while. So now we'll undo the drain point, which I believe is a 10. It's a 10 mil hex. No doubt this is going to make one hell of a mess again. So this is now a problem that I've encountered because it's plastic. And I it's done up too tight. But you can see the tool is slipping in the drain plug. Brilliant. So the oil is now draining. You can see I couldn't get the drain point out. It's plastic and there's, I'm sure there's a special tool to get that undone. So I've cheated and carefully drilled a hole. But prior to doing that, obviously that's definitely not the way to do it. But prior to doing that, I made sure I can access all these T40 Torx bolts because they're going across the front here, right above this cross member. The same at the back here, but you've got the rear gearbox slash transfer box mount here above this cross member, which makes one particularly difficult to get to. But uh, I've made sure all these cracked off before drilling a hole and uh, sealing that fill is fate. So uh, just let that drip a little bit more and then we'll take these out and uh, get the old filter off. So as you can see, the filter is off. What a complete pain in the ass that was to get off and to try to move, maneuver it out between everything. This pipe really caused some problems. So I ended up just pulling it forwards a bit and uh, been able to swivel it enough to, uh, to get it out. So uh, let's, uh, some more swearing commence while we uh, try to get the, uh, the new filter in position. So, new filter is on, all the bolts are torqued up where possible anyway, because there's ones up here you just can't get to because there's a cross member, and likewise here, there's ones behind here that you just can't get to very easily. Um, I think you can see that one, that one, and there's another one down there. I think there's four across the front there, but uh, it's all now on, torqued up, and I need a drink before, uh, before filling that up through the hole there. But, uh, so looking at the old filter, Still got the Land Rover logo on it, so that's, I'm assuming that's gonna be the filter from when the uh, the car was built. So uh, it's on a 62 plate, so it's 2012. So it's uh, it's good 11 years old, it's done 166,000 miles. So yeah, it was kind of due a change, really. And, uh, so just pour a new oil into my little pump to transfer it, and it looks like a, a green color. So it's completely different to the old oil. So. Uh, Perhaps it is a good idea that this is being changed and that's uh, that's a little bit dirtier than uh, what I first thought. So uh, fill him up, it's just a little pump of ball and it's about a little laser one. It's about 15 quid I think, something like that, 20 quid at the most. So uh, hopefully that'll uh, that'll do the job. If not, I'm, uh, I've got a problem. What I've done is marked the level on the bottles. So what I will do to make sure that it's a similar amount we've put back into what we took out, I'll uh, refill these bottles with the old oil and uh, so we can measure what's come out of there compared to uh, to what's gone in so this one's now full you can see i've marked there where it was full So as you saw on that time lapse that I put in, it's just a smidge over three liters and uh, it was running out then of what I would class as a fine thread as they put it. So, got the procedures. And it's a start engine to draw oil from the sump, pump it around the gearbox with the engine still running, slowly add more oil through the fill port until it starts to drip again. So, we'll uh, give it a go. 
So it's now been topped up. We're up to almost five litres now. So we've got two with the parking brake applied, which it is. Select reverse for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now drive for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And now with the flap paddles, select second. One, two, three, four, five. Now select neutral. Now to fill the torque converter, it says throttle to 2000 RPM for at least 30 seconds. Feedback in a second. Right, that's a little over 30 seconds. Select park, allow the engine to idle normally. And then we've got to allow it to get up to 69 degrees. This can take a while, so uh, I'll plug the IRD tool in and uh, I'll just check the level again quickly because I can't say it's going to do any harm. We'll, um, we'll get that up to temperature and uh, have a look. The car's been running now for nearly an hour and we're at 59 degrees so uh, we're getting there but it uh, gives you a little bit of time to um, ponder all the other little jobs that need doing so uh, these have needed changing for a while as you can see it's the rearmost pillar because I've had a commercial oh this is a commercial and I put the seats in it I didn't put these panels in straight away because the person I was going to buy them from took the seats out of an HSE Luxury with the upgraded stereo system in it and his personal car didn't have these in so he was on about changing all the stereo system over to have the uh, additional speakers and stuff um, he didn't do it in the end so after doing all the conversion well, I was about a month after doing all the conversion I finally got the uh, I got these got these rear covers but I've never changed them over I just took the, the commercial panel off here and just put these bits back in so uh, have a bit of spare time to uh, to do that while uh, while I'm waiting for it to warm up yeah, I think you'll agree, that looks much better and uh, kind of finishes off the interior where uh, hides all the fact that it was a uh, commercial. So it's uh, one little job done and we're now up to 62 degrees. So we're finally at 69 degrees. It's basically six o'clock and it was at 45 degrees of Four, just gone four o'clock so it's basically taken two hours of ticking over to get up to 69 degrees so it's not finished yet so it says having hit the magic temperature I consider a good practice to repeat the gearbox selections above which I'll do shortly so that is reverse drive second gear neutral 2000 revs back into park turn off engine woohoo Having primed all parts in the system correctly, the final fill level requires the end uh, requires the gearbox to cool down to below 30 degrees. So uh, that's going to take a while to cool down, and once it gets down to below 30 degrees, you can start engine again. Remove the fork, the fill bung, slowly fill with fluid until a fine thread of fluid leaks from the port. Replace torque to 35 new meters, wipe clean, and inspect for leaks. Done. But it says double check that the temperature has not exceeded 50 degrees during the filling. So, it's now six o'clock. I need another drink, and uh, it's gonna be about midnight by the time this, uh, this cools down, but um, we'll see. So it's now quarter past nine and it is at a little over 30 degrees. So uh, it's taken quite a while to cool down and I've had enough basically. So uh, I'm sure the difference between 30 degrees and 34 or wherever it's at isn't gonna make the biggest amount of difference. And uh, during this time, I watched back at uh, the LR time video when they changed it and 
they didn't completely 100% stick to Robbie's guide. Um, done it a slightly different way. And the ZF guide apparently is slightly different to the Robbie's guide. And the ZF says as long as it's between 30 and 50 degrees, that is correct to take the temperature. Um, so they've done those at 37. They haven't had any problems, as far as I'm aware, anyway. So uh, I think doing a minor 34 isn't really going to be the end of the world. So, haven't had a look quickly at the amount of oil that's come out compared to what I've put in. I seem to have put in quite a bit more. So, uh, I'm assuming when I undo this bung with the car on in a minute that uh, some oil is going to come out rather than need to top it up. But uh, we will see. So the last bit just done, it had the carb run in and it says fill, but mine had already had too much in it. So uh, it said until fluid leaks from the port, bit much as a fine thread, I said on the LR time one. It's not very good on this video because obviously it's dark. I've got a floodlight underneath the car and that sort of thing, but it was just a, a fine thread. And then wipe and clean and inspect for leaks. I'll do that in the morning because it's dark. And then it says double check the temperature has not exceeded 50 degrees during the filling, which uh, I just quickly double checked and it is at 43. So we are all good to go. I'm gonna call that enough for today. So the last thing it says on here that you should do is, if you do have diagnostic tool, now is a good time to reset the gearbox adaptations. So basically the gearbox then has to relearn various parameters and things like that. From what I understand to, get a nice smooth shift and that sort of stuff. So I've seen mixed review or mixed views on whether you should do that or not. So I think I'll take it up the road in the morning once I've cleaned it all up underneath, make sure there's no leaks and uh, see how it's shifting. If it's shifting fine and better, is there any point in doing it? But um, I know it's kind of recommended to do. So uh, we'll have a, have a see in the morning and uh, We'll go from there. So let's have a look at how much oil we've used. So these four I emptied into the car. And this one on the left here, there is 600 mil taken out of that one. So we have used 4.6 litres into the car. And I filled these bottles up with what came out. So that's full, that's full, that's full. And that is almost full, that's about 900. So we've got about a 700 mil difference um, but I did spill some, etc. So I guess it's around about half a litre extra has gone in as to what came out, which pretty much matches what Christian and Vera had on LR time when uh, when they done theirs. So uh, and they investigated the tolerances that ZF state you should expect in difference. So uh, yeah, all good. So, it's all tidied up. Let's give it a little run up the road and uh, check that it all changes gear, all right, and that sort of thing, and see whether we need to do the adaptations. Like I said, I'm a bit seeing mixed views on doing it. And I did put a post on a forum on Facebook last night and got two responses, or two pretty much straight away. It was quite late when I put it on. One said yes, the other said no. So, what do you do? So, 
uh, just driving. Still want a little house on the state. <coughs> just drive around here. Or well, it seems smooth enough. Not that I've particularly uh, changed gear yet. Gonna take a slightly mixed route, of, uh, just going through the town where I live, onto uh, onto the dual carriageway, and uh, so we can get up to 70, and uh, and then back just uh, down a little rural road back back to the house. So uh, that'll give it give it a good chance to work through all the gears and make sure everything's working as it should. So. Seems uh, lovely and smooth. Barely feel a change gear now, whereas before it used to lurch a little bit. See, I haven't really gone very far yet. I'm only doing 20 miles an hour over speed bumps. But so far, so good. So far so good, just driven a mile and a half ish through town and uh, seems silky smooth I'd say. I don't think it was bad to start off with but uh, this certainly feels smoother than uh, what it did before. So all good, I'll, uh, I'll go another mile and a half or so and we'll just pull over just to uh, make sure it isn't dumping all the oil out from underneath. Not that it should be because uh, it's running for long enough last night, getting warm enough and that sort of thing, so uh, any leak should have been apparent last night. But, uh, we'll just double check. See a little kick down there, lovely and smooth in comparison to uh, kind of what it was, I did used to lurch a little bit. So we'll just pull over here, and I'll lay by, I'll just stick my head underneath. Just to double check before uh, before we go on the dual carriageway, but I can't see it too big. Just no, all good. All looks lovely and dry. You can soon tell because there's that bit of exhaust that sits there, and uh, it's lovely and dry, no drops. So all good to go. We've just gone through all the gears, we're up to 60 miles an hour. Lovely and smooth, there isn't a slight hesitation like there was uh, beforehand, or I felt there was beforehand when it changed in the gear but didn't quite feel like it was right. That seems to have gone now, which is a bonus. But, um, so yeah, well now we uh, got a foot down a little bit more on a dual carriageway. So I think that cost me about eight quid or something. So I know you can get them cheaper. 
elsewhere, but uh, yeah. So, all round up, I think that's uh, that's a good job done. Yeah, it can only be a good thing changing that oil, like I said. So, uh, yeah, I don't know whether it's ever been done before, and it's now on 166,000 miles. So, yeah, well chuffed. So, hopefully, this will encourage or help somebody to uh, to do their own. So, all in all, I think that was a good job done. It seems to be a lot smoother, pulling away, downshifting, upshifting, and that sort of thing, just on the uh, five miles that I've done. But uh, I don't think I'll reset those adaptations. It seems to be behaving perfectly fine now, so I don't want to cause any issues. So um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, I'm sure there'll be more videos on the, uh, on the disco to come.